Hi, Dr. Fred Southwick, Professor of Medicine here, and this is our second video talking about anti-infective, anti-infective therapy. In our first video, we discussed the personal consequences of infections due to antibiotic-resistant pathogens and how antibiotics are mismanaged. Now I would like to teach you how to most effectively prescribe antibiotics. In order to effectively prescribe antibiotics, it is critical to roughly know the antibacterial spectrums of the agents you are using. This is difficult, if not impossible, to memorize. Therefore, I strongly recommend that you use the table published in Infectious Diseases, a clinical short course, and available on our course website. There are two versions you can download. One that includes only the antibiotics you will need to know for testing as a preclinical medical student, and a second comprehensive table that you can use when you are working on the wards. To better understand antibiotic coverage, the analogy of a ladder can be used. The higher on the ladder, the more advanced the antibiotic, and often the more expensive. Let's first look at the penicillin ladder. Penicillin G was the first penicillin to be discovered, and today this antibiotic is primarily used to treat syphilis. It also effectively covers streptococci and anaerobic mouth flora. Because Staph aureus quickly became resistant to penicillin, nafcillin and oxacillin were developed. These agents cannot be broken down by Staph's beta-lactamase, and they effectively treat methicillin-sensitive Staph, abbreviated MSSA. Next, ampicillin and its oral alternative amoxicillin were created, and this aminopenicillin not only covers the same gram-positives as penicillin, but also kills some gram-negative bacteria covering a relatively small percentage of E. coli, Proteus, and Klebsiella. To broaden its coverage, the beta-lactamase inhibitor Sulbactam was added to ampicillin and clavulinate to, to amoxicillin. This addition has increased the percentage of susceptible E. coli, Proteus, and Klebsiella and rendered these agents effective against MSSA. With the increased use of oxacillin came methicillin-resistant Staph aureus, or MRSA. Although methicillin is no longer given to patients, by convention, this is the antibiotic dish used to test for methicillin-sensitive MSSA and methicillin-resistant MRSA, Staph aureus. The treatment of choice for most cases of MRSA is vancomycin. With the increased use of vancomycin, vancomycin-resistant enterococcus, VRE, increased in prevalence, spurring the development of linazolid, a very expensive IV and oral antibiotic that covers VRE and MRSA. On the gram-negative side, next the uretopenicillin piperacillin was discovered that kills Pseudomonas, in addition to the gram negatives covered by ampicillin sulbactam. To enhance coverage, this penicillin has been combined with another beta-lactamase inhibitor, tazobactam. This combination has the commercial name Zosin and is one of the most popular very broad-spectrum antibiotics because in addition to enhanced gram negative coverage, it also kills MSSA and anaerobes. Finally, with the increased use of piperacillin tazobactam and cephalosporins, there has been a rise in extended spectrum beta lactamases, ESBLs, produced by E. coli and Klebsiella and requiring treatment with carbapenems, beta lactam antibiotics whose beta lactam ring cannot be broken down by ESBLs. These agents are generally reserved for severe hospital-acquired infections. Here are the antibiograms for all of these antibiotics. On the top horizontal row is a list of all the bacterial pathogens 
beginning with anaerobes, followed by gram-positive bacteria, and then gram-negative bacteria. The vertical axis lists the different antibiotics beginning with the penicillins. A black square indicates that a pathogen on the horizontal row is sensitive 61 to 95% of the time to the antibiotic listed in the vertical row. The darker gray denotes 30 to 60% sensitivity, the light gray less than 30% sensitivity. An open space indicates the antibiotic is not effective against the pathogen. You see only a few black squares in the top antibiotic row for penicillin, indicating it is a narrow spectrum antibiotic, while piperacillin tazobactam and the carbipenems, imipenem, doripenem, and meropenem have many black squares, indicating they kill a very broad spectrum of bacteria. Now let's look at the cephalosporin ladder. As we discussed earlier, whenever possible, cephalosporins should be prescribed because they are the safest class of antibiotics, being associated with the lowest number of adverse reactions. The first cephalosporin developed was cefazolin, trade name Ansef. This agent covers MSSA, streptococci, and a modern number of E. coli, proteus, and Klebsiella. The oral preparation, Keflex, is well absorbed. As we discussed later, these first-generation cephalosporins are the treatment of choice for many soft tissue infections. The second generation of cephalosporins are now rarely used because the only addition to their bacterial spectrum was ana anaerobic bacteria. Cefoxidin is recommended for treatment of pelvic inflammatory disease. The third-generation cephalosporins, specifically ceftriaxone, with its once per day dosing is now the workhorse antibiotic rec recommended for the treatment of all four of the most common anatomic infections, pneumonia, meningitis, cellulitis, and pyelonephritis. Third generation cephalosporins have enhanced gram negative coverage and cover streptococci as well. As compared to first generation cephalosporins, their ability to kill MSSA is less effective. Therefore, in documented MSSA infections, they are not recommended. Ceftazidine has reduced gram-positive efficacy, but is the only third-generation cephalosporin capable of killing Pseudomonas. Cefepime, the only fourth-generation cephalosporin on the market, has excellent Pseudomonas coverage and also has excellent gram-positive coverage that is comparable to cefazolin. This very broad-spectrum antibiotic is commonly used in hospital-acquired infections. There is a fifth-generation cephalosporin, ceftaroline, that adds MRSA coverage, but otherwise is comparable in coverage to ceftriaxone. It is rarely prescribed. Here is the antibiogram for the cephalosporins. As you can see, cefazolin at the top of this chart is a narrow spectrum antibiotic that is safe and inexpensive. And when possible, this antibiotic should be prescribed. Near the bottom is cefepime, showing many dark squares reflecting its very broad spectrum of activity. I will describe how the information I have just relayed can be applied to treating patients. To summarize this video, First, we introduce you to the antibiogram that shows all of the key bacterial pathogens and their relative sensitivities to different antibiotics. We then introduce you to the concept of antibiotic ladders that explain the different generations of penicillins and cephalosporins. And finally, we introduce you to the concept of narrow spectrum versus broad spectrum antibiotics. In the final video, we will describe how to use the antibiogram to design empiric antibiotic regimens and review the seven steps for effectively prescribing antibiotics. Thank you.